How you guys doing? Um, I've interviewed about like 15 so far. Um, I have another 10 tomorrow. Um, <laughs> so about half of them. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. You know, I think I have the, uh, the ability to play all over the defensive line. Um, as you know, last year I played defensive tackle, um, and then this year I played a little bit more defensive end. Um, you know, but I believe I bring everything in term to the table um, in, ter in terms of playing the run and playing the pass. Um, and I, uh, I'll play wherever um, a coach needs me to play. You know, a guy I loved to watch on Sundays was J.J. Watt, you know, although he's not playing anymore. Um, it was just a, a guy I loved turning on um, the, the tape every Sunday, um, you know, and watching his game and trying to model myself after him. You played the tackle here in Iowa outside. Yeah. You played a little bit of both. What did you learn from that experience playing inside? How did you play it? Like? Yeah. You know, everything happens a little faster inside. You know, you got to be better with your hands, a little lower with your pad level. Um, and it taught me all the fundamentals of playing good defensive line. Um, you know, and I think that really translated to my outside play. Um, it helped me play with good leverage, um, be physical. Um, and uh, I attribute a lot of my play to playing, you know, my, my, uh, my years before and playing inside. Sorry. 275, yes, sir. Yes. I am. Yes, I'll do everything. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, I had two uh, older classmen in front of me. Um, you know, and that's just kind of the way the you know, University of Iowa does things. Um, they are always fair and consistent with everybody. Um, and regardless, you know, I still had some of the higher snaps on the defensive line. Um, and I just learned through this process that every time I step on the field, I have an opportunity to prove myself. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I was happy um, with the rotation um, and the organization that we had. Um, I put full trust in Coach Parker and Coach Bell um, and putting us out there. And uh, again, like I mentioned, every time I stepped on the field, um, it was just another opportunity to go play the game I love and uh, just another opportunity to prove myself. Yep. Yeah, um, you know, I uh, at the University of Iowa, we played in like a really pro style defense. Um, you know, they're really uh, based on fundamentals, um, you know, playing the game the right way. Um, you have a responsibility and execute your responsibility. Um, and uh, you know, even when I came into the University of Iowa as a freshman, you know, I, uh, I resonated with the program just because of the foundation, the culture that they had. Um, you know, you come in, it's blue collar, you work hard, nothing's given to you, everything's earned. And those are a lot of qualities I'm going to bring with me to the next level. Yeah, I met with the Falcons yesterday. Um, you know, they have a great coaching staff. Um, we had a really good interview. I enjoyed every moment of it. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, they have a super interesting defense. I think it would be a really fun scheme to play in. Um, and, obviously, if, uh, you know, I get the opportunity to play in that franchise, I'd, you know, really be looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, CJ's a great kid. Um, I've uh, had limited conversation with him. We're in the same agency, um, so, you know, I've had a little bit back and forth conversation with him, although I trained out in Los Angeles and I was in the north location. He was down in Orange County, um, so we didn't get to see each other too much, but he's got a lot of potential. Um, I think he's a super talented quarterback, and, you know, coming into that Ohio State game, we knew we had a challenge up for us, um, but I'm really excited to see what he can do at this next level. Yeah. Um, I'm the first one in my family that's had the you know, opportunity to play at the next level in college, but also you know, get this far. And uh, we're all just having a lot of fun with it. Um, obviously, my parents are super proud of me, um, and I'm just really happy to be here. Yep. Yep. 
Uh, you know, Jack Campbell is a, you know, a great leader on our defense. He was a guy when I came in as a freshman, he took me under his wing um, and, you know, showed me the ropes. Um, he's a guy that's super humble. He works hard. Um, you know, small town Iowa kid, just, you know, your ideal Iowa Hawkeye. And, uh, you know, we walk around together. A lot of people tend to mix us up. I think uh, we look kind of similar, you know. Um, but, again, it's a really hard worker, really great kid, and he's going to make a great fit um, out of whatever team takes a chance on him. Um, you know, I'll, uh, I'll stick with some of the guys that I trained with. Um, I was with Ohio State, Zach Harrison, um, and Georgia, Nolan Smith. Um, you know, both very good edge guys, very talented prospects. Um, and, uh, you know, I think uh, they have a lot of potential and they're great players. And, they're, uh, you know, I'm really excited to see what they put out tomorrow and Friday. I, uh, I have not spoke with them. I talked to the Steelers tomorrow um, in a formal interview. But, you know, of course, you got to watch TJ, TJ Watt. That's the guy that everybody watches. Um, for me, um, I was more of a JJ Watt player. Um, obviously, he's retired now, but that's, you know, who I turned on on Sundays and love to watch. Um, yes, I interviewed them with them already. It was great. Um, you know, uh, I spent some time, you know, obviously being right there near Wisconsin. Um, you know, obviously I was a Bears fan growing up, but, um, you know, would go back and forth, met a, a bunch of guys, uh, you know, over from Wisconsin um, and uh, the Cheeseheads, right? Um, but, you know, it would be, it'd be great to play in Lambeau. Um, I think they have a great established program there. Um, and uh, our interview was great, so. I think it's just my versatility, um, you know, being able to play all over the defensive line. Um, it's also just the mentality I have. As some of you guys mentioned, um, I've never started a game in Iowa, so I'm looking forward to getting that, that first start at the next level. So coming in with a chip on my shoulder, I'm just ready to put my nose down and work. Every time we had a, a game against Northwestern, you know, his name was circled. Uh, we always had a good competition against each other. Um, you know, he's a great player, um, and uh, I knew every week I had to be ready when we played him. Yep. You know, I played defensive tackle primarily uh, the year before, so, um, you know, I really didn't do much preparation for playing outside that game. Um, you know, they bumped me outside, and uh, as you guys saw the result, I mean, uh, when I can't get around someone, I'm going to go through them. Yeah, so I, uh, I started, I grew up playing hockey. I played all the way to my senior year. Um, we actually had a pretty good team, made it to the Final Four in state, but couldn't play due to COVID. Uh, we would have played in, you know, um, the Blackhawks arena. But uh, I think I attest hockey to a lot of my skills and my balance that I have today. Um, you know, hockey requires a lot of agility. Um, it's a hard sport to play. It's very physical. It's very demanding. Um, and a lot of those attributes um, contribute to the player I am today on the football field. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, that was a sad day. I'm a Kander fan. Um, I grew up watching them going through their uh, their Stanley Cup days. Um, and obviously, was a huge fan, but sad to see them go. Um, I love to golf, although you know I'm not the best golfer. Um, I think some of my hockey skills translate over a little bit. Um, but you know, I also love to fish. Just you know, love being outside. Love the outdoors. Um, that came uh, in an interview about a year ago with one of my uh, defensive tackles, Noah Shannon. Uh, you know, he kind of mentioned the name in an interview and it stuck. Um, and since then, you know, I, I like to pride myself in the weight room. It's something I'd always love to do is improve your body and work hard. Um, and it's kind of a name that stuck. And it's, you know, it's been fun. We joke around with it. And uh, I'm assuming it will stick for a while to go. Um, you know, I think... Uh, it's probably not good to say, but in the last two years, I think I led the league in penalties just due to my size, um, unfortunately, which was just kind of part of the game. I was There's really not that many big kids that, that play hockey, so um, just due to my, my size and my weight, um, I was able to uh, you know, sustain a lot of penalties that, in my eyes, I don't think were fair. <laughs> Thank you, guys.
Good morning. Uh, really just, you know, just being here, honestly. Uh, this has been my dream since I was a kid, you know, be up here uh, and to be in this situation. So just to have this going for me right now, man, it's, everything's been a highlight. My yak ability. Uh, I feel like nobody can tackle me one-on-one. -on -one. Um, and if you look at my highlight film, I feel like that shows it in my film. Uh, I'm a tremendous, you know, with the ball in my hands. Uh, and I can make any play with the ball in my hands. My speed. I feel like that's the biggest thing that people uh, are asking about. So uh, tomorrow I'm going to put on a show. Uh, the Falcons. Uh, the Raiders. Uh, Chicago Bears. Uh, I got a lot, but. Uh, yeah, I've had some interactions with the Steelers. Yes, sir. No, sir. I met with them at the senior ball, so, yes, sir. Yeah, I want to show that I can, I can run. I can run with the best. Uh, I feel like, you know, that's the only question mark on me. Um, so, you know, I'm just here to, you know, do what I do and, and prove to everybody, you know, what I'm capable of. I feel like I'm going to probably jump like a 38, 39. I may even get a 40. I don't know. I say I definitely uh, I had to work on it. Uh, you got to work on anything to become, uh, you know, great. Um, so, you know, I put in a lot of time in by myself and, you know, with our position coaches uh, just to get better. And, uh, you know, I feel like that's shown, you know, through my three years at Iowa State. Uh, uh, the TCU corner. Uh, yeah. Uh, man, just a very patient corner. Um, you know, he knows how to use his size, even though he's small. You know, he knows how to get up, uh, you know, underneath you if you allow him to. So, uh, you know, and he has great speed. Um, so, you know, competing with him was the best. No, you're good. Yeah. I think that was God-given, honestly. Um, that ability, I just kind of, you know, I was born with it. Uh, my explosiveness. Um, and like you said, I feel like that's something that separates me from a, a lot of other receivers. I'm very explosive, so. Yeah. Man, Will's a great teammate. Great teammate, man. He's, he's willing to do anything for the team, and that's a guy that, you know, you can ride and die for. Um, and, you know, he proved it yesterday with uh, how he did in the combine, uh, in the drills. So, you know, the sky's the limit for him, and I can't wait to see, you know, what he, you know what, what's the future uh, holds for him. Man, that'd be, uh, I mean, that'd be amazing. Uh, that'd be amazing. That, that's really all I got to say. Yeah, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of guys, really. Um, you know, the two that really stand out to me, uh, Jalen Nolan, TJ Tampa. Uh, those are two young guys that I've, you know, seen grow. Um, and, you know, I'm looking for them to have a big year coming up this past, uh, this next year. His speed. Uh, I don't think anybody can keep up, keep up with him on the football field. TJ, his length. Uh, you know, the NFL, you know, at corner is starting to become, you know, a little bit more length, and that's what TJ holds. Uh, no, sir. But I met with them at the Senior Bowl, so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, I'm me. Um, I can't really compare myself to anybody else. Uh, you know, when you start to compare yourself to someone else, that's when you start to lose sight of what you hold. So, you know, in a sense, I am unique because there's only one Xavier Hutchinson here, and that's myself right here. So uh, I do what I do best. Um, you know, I feel like not a lot of other people can do what I do because they're not me. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, you know, when, when you got a guy who, you know, deserves the rock about 30 times and, you know, Brees Hall having him, uh, you, you got to create lanes for him because, you know, the moment that you open him up is the moment that you can open yourself up. And now the defense has to worry about the running back. 
So, you know, it's twofold. We work together. You know, that's how you create a great offense, is if everybody works together and everybody's, you know, willing to put their ego down for the best of the team. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I, I still feel like I had to work on it. Um, so, you know, uh, but they did, you know, they did say that I was a little bit more physical. Um, but, you know, I obviously feel like I can be a little bit more physical, so. Yes, sir. Separation is number one. Uh, this is a tight, neat league. You gotta get open. Catching, that's like one and two. It's like one A, one B, really, because they go hand in hand. And then three, uh, you gotta have, you gotta have speed in this game. Uh, you know, you gotta be a downfield threat. So just you know, being able to have those three things, uh, you can you know, you can be in the league for a very long time. Yes, sir. I did. Oh, you said formal. No, sir. I had it at the senior bowl, so I kind of got everything out the way. Yes, sir. But uh, it was great. Uh, you know, I, yes, sir. I got to uh, be in front of uh, Brian Doble. Um, you know, just the energy that was around there it felt great. Uh, you know, so I definitely, I definitely enjoyed. You know, being around them. Yeah. I mean, that's what you expected from them, though. I've seen it now for two years, uh, just being at the practice field with them and seeing them in games. There's nobody like them. Uh, you know, he's one of a kind, and uh, I'm so happy for him because he deserves it. And, uh, you know, I'm just praying for, you know, uh, a healthy recovery for him coming up in this next year. When you get to the NFL, are there any players that you're most looking forward to meeting that you haven't met before, or any players on the other side of the ball that you're looking forward to uh, testing your uh, Everybody. I mean, it's the NFL. Those are the best of the best players. So anytime that I get to, you know, suit up and go against the best, uh, I'm going to be happy and I'm going to be ready. Uh, first, no, I was not surprised at all. Um, you know, all he needed was an opportunity, and uh, he got his opportunity, and he ran with it, and I'm so proud of him because, uh, you know, that, that takes a tremendous leader and a tremendous guy, you know, to be confident in himself to, you know, lead that team. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I've seen Brock, you know, for the two years. I was able, you know, to catch a lot of uh, footballs from him. Um, a tremendous leader, a great human being, you know, really cares about you outside of the game, uh, wants to see how you're doing mentally, um, you know, he's always there for you, even with the, you know, the harder things that are going on with your life. Uh, he's always down to listen. So, you know, a lot of the leadership skills and qualities that Brock had, you know, I've tried to take from him. Uh, he's been, you know, like a big brother to me at Iowa State. Yeah. Um, I feel like I matured a lot. I mean, I went out of high school, had to go the JUCO route. Um, you, you don't really know what that, you know, holds for you. Um, so, you know, the only thing that you really do is put your head down and work. Um, you know, I was grateful enough to have Iowa State believe in me early on. Um, I stayed there. I stayed committed. I stayed loyal to them. I saw it through, and uh, I had a great three years there. Um, but really, you know, Iowa State just challenged me mentally and uh, physically, you know, to, to be the guy that, you know, they wanted me to be. Um, so... I owe Iowa State a lot for. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, to be honest with you, I think Blinn just, Blinn just recruits the best. Honestly, I think, you know, at the end of the day, you know, that's how it kind of goes in the JUCO route. Uh, they recruited us, uh, and then they kind of, you know, developed us uh, for our year and a half, two years there. Yeah, um, I got. I have to give a lot of credit to you know the people who poured into me early on when I was there. Uh, coach Nate, our receiver coach, uh, Kyle Kemp, uh, they all believed in me. And they all you know were ready to work with me whenever. Um, so you know, I learned a lot from them, and they gave me a lot of knowledgeable tools to use. Um, and you know, I just used it, and now you know that's kind of you know how I, I gained everything that I had now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right.
So the first couple of guys I wanted to ask you about, um, Will McDonald from Iowa State and um, Lucas Van Ness from Iowa are two, uh, two of the main guys whose names have been floated out there as potential first rounders. Um, from your perspective, do you believe that um, both one or neither will hear their uh, names called in the first round? Well, Randall, let's start with Lucas Van Ness. I think he will definitively go in the first round, and I'm going to go so far as to say I think he ends up in the top 10 of the draft. I really think the versatility he brings as a prospect is something that NFL teams covet. He's obviously established himself as a productive rush end. He's played over the nose, and he really could be a 3-4 outside linebacker. So that's the type of toy defensive coordinators at the next level really, really appreciate. So I really think Lucas Van Ness, when you start looking at his draft range, I think the earliest he could go is five, and it would be difficult to see him falling past Houston at 12. So I think that's a nice place to put him, but eight, nine, 10 looks like his sweet spot. And uh, another Kirk Ferentz uh, defender ends up, uh, ends up in the NFL. As for McDonald, I think 25 to 35 is probably a safe range for him. He's a bit of an older guy at age 24, and I think that's something teams will hold against him. But there's a lot of positives, right? Super productive as that rush edge. Um, you know, really one of the best defenders in the Big 12 for, for, for multiple seasons. Um, the questions about him come with, is he enough of a run stuffer? Is he, is, he, is he stout enough at the point of attack? But there's enough great film on him. And look, in this quarterback-driven league, you need guys who can go get that quarterback, and McDonald's certainly proven he can do that time and again. Yeah, I mean, it tied the, the Big 12 uh, career sack record, so definitely a, a proven commodity there. Going back to Lucas Van Ness, he's kind of an interesting guy in that um, he's regarded as, uh, from his teammates, they call him Hercules. He's just kind of this physical freak of nature, uh, probably more suited for it to be an edge guy. Didn't really do that at Iowa. So what, do you, what system do you think would fit him best for his uh, skill set? I think the I think I, ideally he's in a four down front and he comes off the edge. Um, but I think the asset in what's really going to nudge him up in that top ten range is the versatility that that I spoke of that he can fit with multiple systems. Um, look, when you're drafting that high, there's a fluidity to to your roster that 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 is inherent. So I think the fact that he can uh, adapt to whatever system he is in is is going to be a strength. But when you draft defensive players that high, they better be able to go tackle the quarterback. And, and Van Ness has clearly shown that that he has the uh, he has the capability, the strength to do that. Different than McDonald, he has shown too that he can really hold the point of attack and, and, and really go stop the run and, and be an asset in that part of the game. Let's talk a little bit about some of the offensive guys. Sam Laporta, um, another uh, Iowa tight end. Iowa is known for producing some really great tight ends. How does he compare to some of the other guys? that have come out of Iowa and that have had success in the NFL? Well, I, I think Sam Laporta uh, compares favorably. Uh, I think the, I, the offensive system that Iowa runs, that they did not run particularly successfully this year um, in terms of production, probably don't have to remind you of that. Um, I do think that system prepares guys well for the NFL. Uh, he has a huge component in the, uh, in the blocking game. Sam Laporta's biggest problem this year is Iowa didn't have anyone else to throw to. So he was the he was the focal point of a lot of uh, opposing defenses. So I really feel like the Iowa tight end is such a strong brand that it's going to overcome some of his uh, his relative lack of production last year. The biggest problem for Sam Laporta is that this is the best tight end class in, in recent memory. When you look at Michael Mayer and you look at Dalton Kincaid, and we can keep knocking, you know, knocking off big names and going down the list. Obviously, nobody's built like Georgia's Darnell Washington, who's a six foot seven Sequoia. So there is some traffic in front of him, but I do see him as a great late second round value for a contender, a guy they could plug in and even start if they had a need at tight end. He's a guy who kind of um, got more people started talking about kind of later in the process, kind of where do you think he'll go? What, what range and kind of what things do you think he brings to the table? Yeah. So I, I think Jack Campbell is going to go at some point on, uh, on, on Friday. I think that's a, that's a safe, a safe bet for Jack Campbell. And I think early on in the draft process, he was maybe projected a, a little bit higher and I think he's gotten picked apart a little bit at times, but I just think when you look at production and you look at physical strength and capabilities, there's a lot to like about Jack Campbell. And I, I can't stress enough that 
Kirk Ferentz's players have a great brand in the NFL. They are tough. They are sturdy. They have played in pro-style systems. And there's a confidence that they'll be able to translate up. And if you look at the amount of guys that Bill Belichick has taken over the years, who obviously worked Kirk worked for him uh, with the with the Cleveland Browns, and you look at just you you look at the hit rate of guys from from Iowa. It's it's strong, and and I really think that's gonna that's gonna resonate. Yeah, out of the the players that we've talked about so far, which one or ones do you feel most confident can make it an impact right away and possibly be a, a year one starter? Yeah, well, I think if someone takes Lucas Van Ness where they take him, they're going to want him, almost need him to start to to justify that high of a draft position. So I really feel like that's, you know, that that's going to be a top priority. He's almost going to have to start. And then McDonald, when you look at him, it's just going to matter what kind of traffic's in front of him. And, and again, some of what he does could be as a third down specialist. So he may not be a starter, but if you, if you are a, a every third down, a third long type situational player, that's almost starter value, even though you're actually not on the field when the game starts. So, Nick, I'll, I'll start off with Will McDonald, and he's obviously kind of a unicorn prospect coming from Ames. What are his strengths that he brings to the table? Yeah, absolutely, Jake. Honestly, Will has a lot of strengths. You know, I've been familiar with his game for actually a long time. He's from about an hour kind of from where I grew up back in Wisconsin. So to me, what I think of the most when I think of Will McDonald, I think athleticism, of course, that's gotten a lot of you know, kind of excitement and respect to his game really since after the season, actually, with some of what he has shown at senior bowl work and things like that. He's got a basketball background, which is kind of how people started to find out about Will. So the athleticism, specifically some of his speed and ability to bend kind of when he's doing the pass rush, that got him a lot of attention. And then on top of that, and of course, that goes along with his pass rushing abilities, I will also add, Jake, his incredible work ethic. From the time I've gotten here, after obviously he's been done at Iowa State, Will has garnered a lot of praise and attention for that work ethic. I know there were times when staff and players kind of thought everybody was, you know, done or would be kind of hanging out with friends and things of that nature. And he would be at the workout facility just putting in that extra time. You can hear that type of thing from some of his high school coaches as well. I'd say that's what really stands out to me, Jake, with, with Will's strength and kind of his future. So what would be the reason he wouldn't be a first-round pick? Yeah, so 
I'll start off by saying I don't think any of that would necessarily be, uh, you know, with respect to his game or like a lack a lack of respect there. I think it's a couple things. This is actually a really, really good edge class when you've got guys like Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech. I know people around here are familiar with Lucas Van Ness, who isn't necessarily the pass rusher sack guy as much as Will's numbers will stand out, but he's got a little more size to him. Uh, you know, good D line program there as well, like Iowa State. So I think it, it could be sheer numbers with just some of the really good pass rushers, as well as from what I've gathered and I've spoken to a scout or two, I've looked at plenty of mock drafts doing kind of my research ahead of this. There's a lot of questions, Jake, with just how this first round could shake out, whether it's how many quarterbacks, trades, you know, the Chicago Bears kind of set off maybe a domino effect with the massive trade that they made coming out of that first pick. So I think those are a couple things. And the fact of the matter is when I have seen him projected first round, Jake, it's often been late in the first round. And there is one less pick this year in this first round. I believe the Dolphins forfeit their pick. I know there are only 31. So that's something when, when you are kind of a prospect in that 18 to 35 range, which I would say Will is, that's something that can potentially kind of get you in the end there too. So, of course, if McDonald doesn't get picked, the drought of Iowa State's no first-round picks in 50 years extends. Is there maybe a, a tension around the program about that, or is it just noise? Yeah, so around the program, I would say it's just noise, Jake. Honestly, it's perfect timing. We caught up with Matt Campbell recently, and he spoke about some of the NFL draft success and the fact that a few years ago, it'd kind of be a huge deal to get somebody drafted. And now I feel like that's become the expectation at Iowa State. Of course, it's still a great accomplishment. And these, these young men and these student athletes are achieving their dreams. But I would say within the program and, you know, really close to it, of course, it'd be a huge recognition. But like the Cyclones and, and their respective staff know that, you know, guys like Brees Hall and others that have been around the program also have had that type of talent. So I don't think it's necessarily really tension there. I will say the fan base, it's something that they certainly hear about uh, and kind of talk about as well as maybe rival fan bases. Yeah. Well, we'll see if it, if, if it comes to an end. And of course, McDonald's is going to get drafted. It's just a matter of, of when and by who. I don't know how big of an NFL fan you are, how much you watch on Sundays, but what team do you think Will would fit best or maybe a couple different teams? Yeah, Jake, I'll say off the bat, I'm a huge NFL fan. That's one that, you know, obviously I'm in the sports industry as well. I will always be a fan of, of that league uh, in terms of the product they put on TV. So I would say just focusing on best fits, uh, at least initially, you know, there are a few teams I know have shown interest that, that Will's been mocked to a little bit. And I would say if Will can get drafted to a team like the Chiefs or the Eagles or the Vikings or the Rams, I'll throw the Steelers in there as well because Mike Tomlin came out to pro day here. But it's funny, I started with the Chiefs and Eagles. Obviously, they're very good teams, but smart defenses and the best fits for Will will be most NFL teams because they won't try to kind of put him out, uh, put him on the inside or kind of outside of his comfort zone. He did that a little bit at Iowa State. And with that scheme, it worked. And the coaching staff here is great. And he did a great job. But in the NFL, much more size, physicality. He's somebody that you want on the edge, whether that's straight up on the line or potentially even in like a 4-3 outside linebacker pass rush hybrid type role. But Jake, those are some of the teams I think would be really good fits, both with respect to what those franchises have as well as how he could be best utilized in that position. Are there any teams that might be a bad fit or might already be loaded at the edge? Yeah, I think so. Bad fit, there wouldn't be a lot simply because he wouldn't really be forced to play inside or anything. But with talking to a couple scouts recently, I think kind of a system that would maybe be more difficult just because it's kind of more focused on that front and the depth there rather than kind of the individual edge or pass rushers would maybe be like a Patriots team just because that's often more loaded in terms of size and physicality in that front three, front four, sometimes five based on kind of the defenses with Bill Belichick. But just in terms of 
his skill set and his work ethic, I think he could fit 26 to 30 teams. I really do. And you as someone who who's covered him for several years now, day in, day out, the kind of football season, where do you think Will should be drafted? Yeah, so honestly, I, I'm a little biased because of, you know, being around him. I've enjoyed interviewing him, obviously his football skills, but he has something that that is special and almost generational, Jake, in terms of that athleticism, the ability to get to the pass rusher, and the fact that, Jake, even though he was in school for several years, obviously he came back an additional year to, to graduate and was able to add to some of his numbers as well. The thing is, he's still just scratching the surface. He's really only played this level of football with this type of focus for six and a half, seven years in his whole life. So I think that with that being said, it's a really strong class. I think I would probably have him in that 17 to 28 range. I, I think to me, he's comfortably a first round prospect. He would have a first round grade from me. And I think that ceiling that you have in terms of the projection is just so, so high for a prospect like Will McDonald. And of course, Will won't be the only Cyclone drafted. Xavier Hutchinson most likely will hear his name called on either Friday or Saturday. What is Xavier like as a prospect to you? Yeah, so Xavier Hutchinson is is actually the whole package. And as much of a star as Will McDonald is, uh, Xavier was the biggest winner, X as he's often referred to around here, was really the biggest winner to me at Pro Day. He had a perfect day. He's so good at kind of connecting with people and making people and those relationships build and feel very comfortable. I can say that from firsthand experience. And on the field, he's got good size, good route running ability, really good hands, and a strong ability after the catch. I think that he's maybe been even a little overlooked because he did have a few drops last season. But then again, I can't really blame him because of just how much of a focal point he was. I think that he is a terrific prospect, an even better person. And I see him in that third to fourth round range, no no lower than fifth. And that would simply be because, again, so much of this is unpredictable. But I've seen him as high as early to mid third round. And I think he is a guy that's typically not going to come in and be your number one receiver, right? But that's often a guy that will be in that three to five round range in terms of your wideouts and able to contribute in your first year or two. Yeah, he's, he's a good player, and I, I know Mike Tomlin seemed impressed when he saw him. And, and another Cyclone that did not participate at Pro Day, if I'm, if I'm correct, MJ Anderson. MJ Anderson. Did he – was he at Pro Day? Yeah, he, he did some, uh, some he did of his times there. Yeah. And he's somebody – I think Iowa State and the tutelage of Matt Campbell – John Haycock, Eli Rashid was so big, Jake, for his production and his development. I think he's someone that wasn't expected to come here and, and just be here for a year. I'm pretty certain on that from, you know, a few avenues. But the fact he was able to put up that type of production, I think he's someone that, you know, he was a little dinged up at Pro Day. So that didn't necessarily help a bunch. I do think he gets drafted. He's more in that you know, day three guy, late fifth to early seventh range, but he's got the motor from what he showed at Iowa State, the production, as well as that size and a distinct ability to get to the pass rusher. I know that's something obvious at the position, but I can tell you firsthand it's true. And I think something like that, obviously like Will McDonald, not quite to this extent, but will get MJ Anderson drafted. And that's why I'm comfortable that there will be at least three or four Cyclones picked in the 2023 draft. And then the other one, of course, is Anthony Johnson moved to safety his his senior year. What does he bring to the table? Yeah, so Johnson has actually impressed and really kind of increased uh, his chances not only to go dra to get drafted, but to even get picked a little higher. Similar to X, he can just really connect with you, you know, in interviews. Terrific leader. One of the transformational pieces, really, for Iowa State football, Matt Campbell himself would say that. I think he's a really smart player. He's got solid speed. He's added to some of his size. And, of course, he can cover because he was an all-Big 12 guy at cornerback before making the switch, Jake, to safety. So I think he's the full package. You know, there are obviously things you can 
look at to, uh, you know, maybe pick at a prospect later in that draft. But he's somebody, quite honestly, I'd be shocked at this point based on from what I've heard if he does not get drafted. I'd probably put him as number three on that list to me, Jake, after X and Will McDonald. 